Which is faster, hot or cold? Well, hot, of course, because you can catch a cold. Thought you might like a joke in this season. Whether you're laughing or you're groaning, welcome to our digital campus, and thank you for choosing to spend time with us. In this season of COVID-19, we know that you have many choices for things to watch and places to engage online. So we are very thankful that you have chosen to spend some time with us. If this is your first time, we extend a special welcome to you. We meet here nightly at 7 p.m., Tuesday through Sunday. Each broadcast is approximately 30 minutes, except for Wednesdays and Fridays, when we spend an hour together in a live format. Through YouTube or Facebook, your choice, you are able to ask questions and engage with the speakers and our guests. But now, without any further delay, allow me to present Pastor Arash and his dynamic introduction of this week's series on vulnerability entitled, I Was Naked. Amen. Praise the Lord. So glad you could join us tonight and uh, for our new uh, series this week. And it is called, I Was Naked. Hallelujah. I mean, it's a very powerful series on um, on vulnerability. And you're going to enjoy every lesson. It's going to be power packed. Um, it's going to be lots of lots of good, deep content. And we're hoping that you just take everything and just uh, soak everything up. Um, and it's um, it's going to be based out of the scriptures in Genesis uh, chapter 3. Um, this is a very old story, but it's a very relevant story. And it will never ever lose its relevance. This story will never become irrelevant because it's very true. And of course, the story did happen. Um, and I'm going to read it in Genesis chapter 3. Verse six. So now let me give you some pretext, um, some what is happening before we get to this passage. God speaks all creation into existence, but when he gets to man, he comes down, uses his hands, and forms and fashions humanity. And then he personally breathes life into them. That's the level of love and care he has for humanity. And then he gives them everything they need, an entire world all to themselves, but says, leave this tree alone. And that's kind of where our story comes from. When the woman saw, verse 6, that the tree produced fruit that was good for food and was attractive to the eye and was desirable for making one wise, she took some of its fruit and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband who just happened to be sitting there and she ate it. Then the eyes of both of them opened and they knew that they were naked. They were naked before and that was not a, it was not a concern. It was normal. It was natural. It was a great thing. Everybody was naked. However, once they eat of the fruit, that's when they realize that they were naked. So, in an act of desperation, they look for whatever they could find. And they find fig leaves and they put them together as covering for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the orchard at the breezy time of the day. And what do they do? They hide from God. And they hide among the trees. The very trees that God made for them to enjoy, they're hiding behind. And the Lord calls out to the man, Where are you, Adam? This wasn't a, Where are you, Adam? All right, Adam. No, no. This was, Where are you, Adam? Why aren't you not here? This is our routine time together. We're always spending time together. Where are you, Adam? And the man replied, I heard you moving out in the orchard, and I, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. This is a tragedy, one of the greatest tragedies humanity ever faced. The loss of relationship with God, their creator. 
that intimacy that they had with God completely vanished. It disappeared. And God becomes quarantined and isolated from the very creation he desired to have communion with. And not only that, Adam and Eve not, didn't just hide from God, but they also hid from one another. So now this communication has been severed between humanity with one another. They couldn't talk to one another anymore. Not the way they used to. Not with that level of transparency. Not with that level of vulnerability. They hid from each other. And they tried to cover up their nakedness, their vulnerability. But that's the problem. They couldn't cover it up. And that was the problem also, is that Adam and Eve did not realize how detrimental their action was. And how they just lost their ability to completely talk and communicate in a vulnerable manner to their creation and to one another. You can't gain something back if you haven't realized you've lost it. We as humanity have lost our ability to communicate with one another and with our creator. We've lost that true, transparent, intimate, vulnerable communication where our thoughts, our, our emotions, everything coming out and being completely understood by one another. That has been taken from us. But some of us don't realize that we've lost it. And God has been working throughout human history, redeeming his creation back to where it was supposed to be. Restoring that communication back with one another. Restoring that communication back with him. And that's the whole redemptive plan, is redeeming ourselves back to where we were. God's goal is bringing us back and redeeming what has been lost. But if you don't realize you've lost it, you're not going to be fighting to gain it. True community cannot happen without vulnerability. You can't accomplish it. We have substituted and we have accepted a substandard view of communication with one another. And the challenge with that is because we've accepted that, we've accepted a fake, shallow, empty, lonely idea of what a relationship looks like. Because if you don't have true community, you're completely alone, isolated, unable to connect with anyone, depression, anxiety, all the symptoms of loss of true communication, where you could have been vulnerable with one another, where you could talk to one another, where there was no shame and there was no fear present when you could just be real with somebody. Are we practicing what we were meant to be? Having an authentic community where we could be vulnerable with one another without the fear of rejection, without the fear of shame and putting our pride aside, that we're really not as self-sufficient as we like to portray ourselves, but we are completely dependent on one another. That's a very, very against the grain view. I get it. I'm, I'm an American too. I like being self-sufficient. A vulnerability is a realization that you have to depend on others emotionally, and physical things as well. And what's interesting, if we go back to the scriptures, 
and Revelations just kind of really hits it at the head here because because we we try to you know we try to cover ourselves up you know we 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 try to cover that nakedness I mean we're just like Adam and Eve we haven't nothing's changed it could be thousands of years and we're still the same humans still have the same flaws still have the same brokenness and we try to put the best clothes we have and of course you could see I have a really nice uh, jacket as you could see it's really cool uh, thank you to my mother-in-law a very nice jacket uh, but what you don't see is I have my pajama pants on <laughs> uh, what you don't see is I'm in my house in my basement we try to cover ourselves up we try to look professional we try to look good and here Revelations really kind of hits that right that nail right in the head and it says Revelations 3 17 because you say I am rich I have acquired great wealth and I need nothing but do not realize that you are wretched you are pitiful you are poor and blind and there it is and naked I was naked. You are naked. You are broken. You have flaws. And the reason you feel this heavy weight of loneliness is because you don't have true community. Can you speak and be transparent with your community. Some of us are an open book and we, we're extremely transparent with everybody. Um, I'm not saying you need to do that. But are we, do we have a group of people where we could be transparent to? Where we could be vulnerable? I am afraid. I'm not doing well. I'm worried about my kids. Do we have a space where we can do that? Well, we've been trying to do that. And um, there is a call to action with um, this new uh, series forms that we are doing. And one of the calls to action to understand vulnerability and to be engage in it is we're asking everyone to attend a small group a small group connect where we are checking in on one another don't lie and say you're fine when you're not fine don't lie and say everything is good and the lord is great when things are not going great um we could be super spiritual about this and um and be full of anxiety and animosity towards the body, animosity towards Jesus and God. And, and that's not what we want. We don't want animosity. We don't want things to build up. We want you to be real. Because that's how you build true community. We want you to turn on your cameras. Yes, we need to see your face. We, um, we live... Uh, with this pandemic, it's very difficult to have that human, connect, human connection. And by the way, this is not a replacement. You still need to be humanly connected. And we, this is, we are going to go back to seeing one another. But because of the pandemic, this is the next best thing. Have your camera on. Let us see your face. Well, my hair is a mess. I know. Look at mine. I didn't even fix it. I don't care. Do you want authentic community? Are you telling me you don't have bad hair? I mean, I, I... Do we want real community? Do we want to be vulnerable? Well, my house is a mess. Join the club. My house is always a mess. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Engage with the group. Ask, answer these questions. Have prayer requests. I'm sure there's a need. Um, and, and participate in group activities. I mean, this is, this is 
we're going to be in this for the long haul. We need to we need to be connected. We need to be engaged. This is extremely critical. You heard Pastor Stephen talk about it. This is even more important. We should not skip small group connect. We should not skip the ability to come to a place where we can pray for one another. It's extremely critical. And vulnerability becomes even that much more critical because real community is naturally, is supposed to be naturally established through physical presence. But we can't do that. We have to be online. So now it becomes even more intentional. We have to be intentional about vulnerability. And the next engagement is uh, watch a TED Talk and you'll actually see the link um, in the comments section. Uh, it's called What I Learned from 100 Days of Rejection. Um, an excellent, excellent um, documentary. I've already seen it. Um, a little talk. It's only about 15 minutes. Um, then go and ask one of your small group members for something. Um, and that's... That's being vulnerable. Well, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Because when you ask something from somebody, it implies that you lack something and that you are not self-sufficient. Goes against our grain. Vulnerability, that's what we are trying to communicate. Are we being vulnerable? We're just like Adam and Eve. We're trying to hide and we have fig leaves and we put in our best, best hairs and we put our video on and look, see how everything's so good. And, which worked out great with Facebook. I mean, Facebook, you can put the best of everything. You never put the worst of everything. With, with social media, you always put you know, the good stuff. You never put the bad stuff. But then you wonder why you're so lonely and why you feel so isolated during this pandemic. And because you're missing authentic community, you're missing real community. And the only way you're going to get that is when you have vulnerability, when you have transparency, where you can talk to people about your problems. And here's the problem. We were able to distract ourselves with everything, with sports and movies and everything, and everything's been canceled. And now we have nothing but to deal with ourselves. And all we look in the mirror and what do we see? We see a naked reflection of ourselves. We see a broken individual that needs love. And here's the amazing thing. I wonder what would have happened if Adam turned to God and said, God, this is my fault. And I take full responsibility. Please. Don't let me lose a relationship with you. I wonder if the consequences wouldn't have been so severe. Maybe God was throwing him a bone, just saying, okay, maybe, maybe he'll fess up now. Maybe he'll fess up now. Maybe he'll fess up now. I'll keep asking it this way, this way, this way. And no, no, Adam's pride and his shame and guilt prevented him from having true communion with God. My dear brothers and sisters, please, please don't let shame and guilt and your pride prevent you from connecting with people. I'm so lonely. Why don't you open up? No, you don't know everything, and that's okay. No one asks you to know everything. No one asks you to be so self-sufficient. Those are ideas somewhere you picked up that you have to be super self-sufficient, that you have to know every answer there is. It's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to say, I don't have it together. Jesus, God, I love you. God, I'm, I'm so sorry for your suffering, God. I know it must have been a great tragic thing, Jesus, for you to lose connection and communion with your creation, to lose that intimacy that you enjoyed. And I know, Lord, you were isolated from us, but thank God you came back and you had a plan to restore us right back to you, Jesus. Thank God you have a plan to restore true community, authentic community back, God. I pray, Lord, let the Spirit continue to guide me just like you guided them, Jesus. Guide me, Lord. Let me be open. Let me, Lord, put my pride and my shame aside and help me, God, to have true community. 
with one another, God. I pray, God, that you touch our body, touch our small groups, Jesus, touch our church members, Lord God, who feel isolated, Lord God, feeling, you know, battling depression and loneliness. And I pray, God, that they would somehow, during this pandemic, God, they realize that they need to open up and that, God, they need to be real with who they really are. We love you, Jesus, in your precious name. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, amen, amen. Please be with us. Comment, talk, connect. We're going to be back here at 7, and um, you're going to love Wednesday. We're going to have a Bible study where um, uh, a Bible study is going to be laid out, and then we're going to have questions. So you can actually ask questions. And then we'll have an interview on Friday. I mean, we are just doing wonderful, exciting things and um, just as um, Stephen has uh, laid it out in his uh, sermon series, um, just really, really looking forward to what God is going to do here on our digital campus. And please partner with us. Let, let us get engaged. God is, God is doing a work and let's be part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. We trust that you were both challenged and ministered to by Pastor Arash's message. We invite you to continue to join us this week as we explore vulnerability and its importance in creating true community. Remember to engage with your small group. In the months of May, June, and July, in addition to connecting in our small groups, we will also be studying the fruit of the Spirit. This is a great series to invite a friend to join with you during this season of social distancing since our small groups meet online. If perhaps you have not yet joined a small group, please go to our website, newarkupc.info, and click on the card entitled Small Group Signups. Our Connections Pastor, Desi Lugo, will contact you and arrange for you to join a small group. It has never been easier. Speaking of newarkupc.info, you can find links to previous broadcasts there, as well as the link to the referenced TED Talk entitled What I Learned from 100 Days of Rejection. We're encouraging you to watch this TED Talk and then call someone, preferably a member of your small group, and ask them for something. Let's practice vulnerability. Finally, if you'd like to partner with us in prayer and in giving, you can do both at newarkupc.info. Until next time, good night.